Welcome to uh, St. Mary's for the daily Mass, for the Sunday Mass for uh, April the 25th, uh, the fourth Sunday in Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday. Uh, this week, I got a call that from Barry Free Methodist Church that they are praying for us. Well, we, uh, throughout the pandemic, they have been choosing a different parish to pray for each week, and this is uh, our week to be prayed for by Barry Free Methodist Church. So uh, that's a wonderful thought. Hmm, a wonderful thought. We had two funerals this week, Celinda Canas and Paul Mitzi, and so we keep the Mitzi families and the uh, Canas family in our prayers, Celinda and Paul in our prayers as we come to the Eucharist today. All of our pew refinishing work for the tops of the pews is complete, and we're uh, grateful for how great it looks. We had a wonderful Mercy with an Edge on Friday night, and uh, uh, you can check that out by going to our parish YouTube channel and uh, seeing what's on there. You can see the, the uh, uh, video portion of the Mercy with an Edge night. And coming up, we have our Life Team virtual retreat. That's uh, a few weeks away on May 15th, a Saturday from 9 until 3. And information is on the parish website and in the bulletin. And you can click on that information on the website and it'll lead you to the link to register. So invite our high school age teens to do that. So I invite you to light a candle, <clears throat> to move, stand and sit and kneel as if you are in church, to sing along. Our gathering song is Good Christians All Rejoice. It is the fourth Sunday of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. As we celebrate the mystery of our new life with Christ, we celebrate also the 100th anniversary of the Catholic Women's League here in the uh, parish of St. Mary's. 101 years in the Archdiocese of Toronto. And so uh, we will have a presentation at the end of this Mass in honor of that. Let us remember that our Savior is rich in mercy and great in kindness.
Risen Lord, by your blood you have redeemed us from slavery to sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, by your rising you have claimed us as God's own people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Paschal Lamb, by baptism you have raised us to new life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Peter and John were speaking to the people about the resurrection of Jesus, the captain of the temple arrested them and placed them in custody. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus 
is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among human beings by which you must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the family of Israel say, his love endures forever. Let the family of Aaron say, His love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love The Lord's right hand has triumphed, his right hand raised me. I shall not die, I shall live and recount his deeds. I was punished, I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. There was a traveler who was walking almost a day journey to reach his destination. At one point in the afternoon, he was tired and he noticed a shepherd was tending his sheep. And he thought it's the best time for him to uh, have a good rest and to start his journey again. Even the shepherd, he was more than happy to welcome him to have a chat. And this traveler person, he didn't know that much about the relationship between the shepherd and sheep. So he asked some questions. I would like to share with you three according to the story. First one, he asked the shepherd, how far? Do your sheep walk for a day? Then the shepherd asked him, you are asking about the black ones or white ones? <laughs> then he was wondering, what is this question? He said, okay, tell me about the black sheep. Then the shepherd say, said, they walk at least two miles a day. Then what about the white sheep? Then the shepherd said, they also walk the same distance. <laughs> After some time, he asked another question. How many kilos of wool do you get from one sheep? Wool? Then again, the shepherd asked him, you asking about white sheep or black sheep? <laughs> then he just thought a few minutes and said, oh, give me about white sheep. And the shepherd said, about two kilos from one sheep? Then what about the black ones? Then the shepherd said, we get the same amount from them too. <laughs> you can imagine 
the situation of this traveler, he got angry at the shepherd because he wanted to show some difference between black and white, but the answer is the same. Then last question, after some time he asked, uh, how much do they eat for a day? Then again, the shepherd asked the same question in return. You're asking about white sheep or black sheep? Then the traveler said to him, you can decide, either white or black, you can say. Then the shepherd said, white sheep, they eat at least one and a half kilos a day grass. But he took the answer again from the shepherd. But shepherd also didn't answer about black. After some time he asked, then what about the black ones? Shepherd said the same. They also eat the same amount. He got angry and he continued his journey. <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters here, according to a story, the shepherd wants to show only two differences between black and white, but there are more than other differences. And he knows well each and every sheep in his sheepfold. Good sheep, bad sheep, there are strengths, talents, and so many things, weaknesses, but still, the shepherd treats them equally, even though he sees differences. And our good shepherd, the shepherd par excellence, he looks at you and me the same way. We are good at the same time, we make mistakes, but still he loves each and every one of us equally. He wants to save all of us. He's not worried about the numbers. He's not worried about the majority, no. And we know the parable of the lost sheep. When he has 100 sheep, when one is lost, he leaves 99 and goes after the lost one. He needs even that soul. He loves that much. When we count in the lobby when people come, me and David are so interested in when the number 99 comes. Then we say to each other, David reminds me, Father, it's a lost sheep time. Then I used to say, let us go and tell pastor what he would do. He may go after the lost one live in 99 here. So, my dear brothers and sisters, in today's gospel, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays his life down for his sheep. Then Jesus says, the hired hand leaves the sheep when there is a danger. He doesn't risk his life. He doesn't fight against the animals to save his sheep because he's working for money, for the daily wage. He doesn't love his sheep. Then Jesus says, I know my sheep and they know me. 2,000 years ago, when Jesus said like this, we know. I would like to share with you uh, these three things, what they did, uh, relationship between sheep and the shepherd. Sometimes the shepherd takes his sheep to the green pastures. It's a long distance sometimes. They may take two, three weeks when they return home back again. Sometimes one shepherd may be there or else three or four. They take their sheep together. And when the evening comes, they make the sheep fall with the gate. And all the sheep are there but maybe two, three shepherds. Early in the morning, shepherds, they go to different places and just suppose I am one shepherd, I whistle and my sheep, they come to me. That's why Jesus says here, my sheep, they know my voice and I know them. Then deacon sheep, when deacon whistles, they come to him, they know his voice. Then my pastor, his sheep 
come to him. So Jesus says, I know my sheep and they know me. And again Jesus says, the hired hand, they runs away when the animal attack. At the same time, when the shepherd is standing and looking after his sheep, when the wolf attacks, he fights against the animal. He risks his life. Sometimes they die because he loves his sheep. He never runs away. Our good shepherd is like that. He died for all of us. For all of us. He risks his life. He died in order to give us life. My dear brothers and sisters, in today's world, we know there are so many good shepherds who are risking their lives. In present context, in the pandemic, so many frontline workers, maybe doctors, nurses, and each and every person who works at the hospitals and senior homes, they risk their lives in order to give us life. They are good shepherds. And young men and women who are in the military, who are protecting their country and its citizens, they risk their life. And firefighters, by knowing the fire, by seeing that, they go through the fire to protect the lives of others. For that, they risk their life. And Jesus invites all of us to be good shepherds. World leaders are called to be good shepherds, country leaders. And we as priests are called to be good shepherds. We are good shepherds because we guide God's children towards green pastures. We help God's children to, be, get, to get closer to God by administering sacraments. We win souls for the kingdom of heaven. And teachers in the schools, they are good shepherds. They help children to walk on the right path. And you, being parents, are called to be good shepherds. To look after your children and to tend your sheep entrusted to you and to take them towards green pastures. For that, you toil hard, you work hard to get Jesus salvation to your children and to give them a better and bright future. This is an old story. A priest completed his 50th ordination anniversary and there was a party for him and he deserved that 50 years. He had a very uh, close friend who was an actor. He invited him to sing his favorite psalm, Psalm number 23, Good Shepherd Psalm. And this actor, he asked him in return, Father, I will sing, yes, but you also have at least to recite the psalm after I will sing. When the time came, this actor, he performed singing and doing things you can imagine very well. And people applauded him, appreciated. Afterwards, it was the time of the priest, jubilarian. He just uh, recited the psalm, psalm. He didn't have a good voice. But in the end, whole congregation was in awe and some moved to tears. And the person next to the actor who sang first leaned over and said to him, when you sang, people applauded you. But when the priest recited this psalm, whole congregation was in awe and they moved to tears. Why? Then the actor said, I know the psalm, but the priest, he knows the shepherd. My dear brothers and sisters, at last, I would like to tell you three things. First, 
let us ask our good Lord's strength and courage for all of us to be good shepherds, to risk our lives for our family members and our community members and our loved ones as he did. Second, let us ask him <coughs> his strength and courage for us to be a good sheep in his fall, uh, sheepfold so that we may continue to uh, do his commandments and we will be a faithful and obedient sheep. And lastly, let us bring to this Eucharist all the sheep who are out of this sheepfold of Jesus so that they may return to the Lord and to the sheepfold and they may listen to the voice of Jesus. As a community of believers, we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, rejoicing in the selfless love of Christ, the Good Shepherd, let us pray that we may also give our lives in service as we pray for the good of the Church, the vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and the safety of all people. For the one flock of Christ, separated by this pandemic, but united in mind and heart by God's Spirit, and for all who are entrusted with the ministry of shepherding in love, parents, teachers, bishops, priests, deacons, and lay pastoral workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the women and men who risk their lives that health and healing might be a reality in our world, for the people of India, and for the safety of all peace and security personnel throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all living in loneliness at home, in nursing facilities, or in retirement residences. For all who suffer with anxiety, depression, and other forms of mental illness. For the recovery of those seriously ill in hospitals or intensive care units. And for safety and health of all caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For an openness in the hearts of all to understand how God is calling them, whether to marriage, ordained ministry, religious life, or single life, and for those who mentor them in their process, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for all who are sick and have asked for our prayers, including Will Dwyer, Judy Turnbull, Sandra Hickey, Denise Laporte, Gaetano Stramalia, and Rosemary Trabuco. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for those who have died recently, including Paul Mitzi, Celinda Canis, and for all who grieve the death of a loved one, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayers, O God of everlasting love, and grant that as you gather all people into one fold in Christ, so all Christians may give their lives in service 
to build up the church in unity and love and be witnesses of the gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May, May the, the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal of constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ our Lord. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Yes. 
Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gathered yourself uh, all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom we bestow on the world all that is good Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the C 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer one another a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the risen Lord, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, through Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to invite you to be seated. I'm going to invite up our uh, Grand Knight uh, for our local St. Mary's Council, uh, Dean Beaudry. On behalf of Council 1626 and the Knights of Columbus, I'd like to acknowledge uh, St. Mary's Parish Catholic Women's League with a plaque that I have here, as well as a spiritual bouquet and present to them this morning. Congratulations on your achievement. Thank you, Dean. On behalf of the mem members of the Catholic Women's League, it is my honor to accept this spiritual bouquet and commemorative plaque from the Knights of Columbus, 1626. 100 years ago, on April 21, 1921, St. Mary's C. W. L. was officially chartered only one year after the National C. W. L. was formed. Over the century, Thousands of St. Mary's female parishioners have eagerly participated in service to God, Canada, and abroad through membership in this organization. In the 1920s, members were involved in raising money for a new church floor after the Ku Klux Klan attempted to blow up the old St. Mary's Church. In the 1940s, members were patriotically sewing and knitting for the Red Cross during the Second World War and holding dances and garden party fundraisers. Past traditions such as the bazaar, public speaking contests, donations to a variety of charities, and lobbying the government regarding ethical issues continue to this day. In more recent times, we have also donated to such worthy causes as the Women and Children's Shelter of Barrie, Gilda's Club, Candle Lighters for Children with Cancer, Funding Education for African Women, and sponsoring priests. In the year of mercy, our Catholic Women's League purchased the Divine Mercy picture that you see hanging on our church wall today. Changes have occurred, but we have and will always enjoy gathering for good food and good company. Even now, during the pandemic, we meet on Zoom to pray and laugh together. Over the years, the Knights have been very supportive of St. Mary's Catholic Women's League in so many ways, whether promoting and sharing the cost of a guest speaker, providing the use of their hall, or helping us with the setup for our bazaar, they never hesitate to assist. With gratitude to the Knights, we look forward to displaying this lovely plaque commemorating our 100th anniversary as a Council of the Catholic Women's League of Canada, and we will undoubtedly benefit from your prayers. Thank you. That's wonderful. And uh, tomorrow's Mass is offered for the members of the CWL, the past and present, and the, all of the deceased members. Uh, and a couple of other announcements that I wanted to make. Uh, uh, I want to talk about two things. One is virtual and one is in person. The virtual one is to offer an opportunity to pray daily at three o'clock the rosary or the chaplet of divine mercy for those in our care facilities in RVH, Royal Victoria Hospital, in our Simcoe Hospice, uh, our long-term care centers. For those that are in the facilities and for those who are working the front lines. So if you're interested in that, I invite you to write to Catherine Ecker, and her email is on the parish website. 
The second thing is an in-person uh, opportunity to feed the homeless breakfast in downtown Barrie once a week. Uh, be from 8 a.m. to 9.30. Uh, really, it's from 7 a.m. because you have to get up early to make the coffee and boil the water. Uh, but we also we need people who are going to be able to do that front line kind of thing, handing out the food, but we also need people to contribute monetarily to this breakfast program, uh, maybe to work their connections for donations of food and fruit and yogurt and muffins and all that sort of stuff. So uh, if you're interested in that, I invite you to email the office uh, to be part of that uh, program. This today is the final Sunday in the month of April, and so we invite couples who are celebrating a wedding anniversary in the month of April to stand in your home and to write in the chat on the Facebook Live to write in how many years you're celebrating, uh, what anniversary this is. Let us pray. God, our Father, you created man and woman to love each other in the bond of marriage. Bless and strengthen these couples. May their marriage become an increasingly more perfect sign of the union between Christ and his church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.